Uh, let me give you a, kind of a broad outline of how, how we're going to proceed here. Um, I'll just uh, I'll give some kind of uh, introduction to the path algebra. I'm assuming this is probably unfamiliar to most people. Even if you do know it, maybe you. <coughs> I don't know. What's uh, M support theory that we have for the tapped algebra? Um, uh, I'll call you a theorem. Um, uh, plus some explanation. Uh, <coughs> uh, I'll say some other stuff. Probably. Okay. So uh, this is. Not uh, a paper, so in the, in the uh, abstract I said, I'll, I'll tell you about some experiments we're running with the path algebra. That's, that's kind of what's going on. Um, uh, so, uh, I'm talking about uh, some experiments. Stuff that looks like it. Um, okay, yeah, that, that's kind of what we're uh, what we're going to do. So there's no there's no paper. I don't exactly know, um, you know, what what will go in an eventual paper that maybe talks about these things. Uh, for now, I think, um, at least for me, I'm just uh, just looking. Okay, so. <clears throat> So, uh, so let's take uh, the root of one. So, um, and let's let's just uh, do odd order. I uh, don't get myself in trouble. Um, and let's take uh, L equals this order. Okay. So, if you're doing some uh, type of uh, You know, looking at find control, hop on over, uh, over uh, the complex numbers, this order of this kind of parameter is like your characteristic of your field. So L is like uh, kind of the characteristic of my field, but that, that's the kind of level of importance that this plays. <clears throat> and let's take uh, uh, Z mod LZ, and uh, let's just call this uh, G so it has some generator G. And uh, this uh, tap algebra is going to be. Uh, generated by <coughs> two elements, x and g, and uh, x the l will be uh, uh, zero, so that's a no function. Uh, l minus one, uh, which says in particular that g is uh, invertible. And uh, if I conjugate by this, I should get, uh, we'll say q squared. Um, okay. So uh, this is just. Uh, uh, this algebra, uh, smash product is, uh, G, where the generator of G acts by scaling my, um, my, uh, uh, my algebra here. Okay. So um, <coughs> this, uh, uh, this is a, a Hopf algebra. Well, so first of all, um, this thing is I'm not crazy. This is finite representation type. Basically, um, if you forget about the G, you know, what do I have here? I have some no potent endomorphism uh, uh, acting on some vector space. I decompose that into Jordan blocks, whatever, and those are my kind of indecomposables. So uh, this person has kind of uninteresting representation theory. Um, and then the G just says that I'm looking at, uh, 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 so I can say, DQ. Uh, so these are. So I just uh, look at the character group and I look at uh, uh, modules. Oh, sorry, for CX mod uh, X. Yeah. Um. yeah, so I'm just looking at modules. This I have some additional grading by it. Um, 
the character uh, group for, for that there. Okay. And, um, all right. And, uh, this person is a hawk. Uh, I'll say note, even though you can't note something, but it's a structure, so I don't know how you're going to note it, but whatever. Okay. Um, uh, with the, um, so this, he is what's called his wife, private part of the group. And this is. <laughs> You see, this is um, a non co commutative, uh, which tells me, okay, so then I get um, so this is a, a finite this is a category. Uh, so it has some, shares some kind of formal properties of thinking on representations of a, of a, of a finite group. Um, being inside a stable category, all this kind of stuff. Um, this kind of uh, uh, non commutativity of the co-product here stops us from being uh, braided. This is um, um, uh, TQ, it's like right TQ. This is uh, unbreadable. Um, uh, but I kind of, I kind of don't uh, want you to uh, care so much about that. I'm just telling you that, just to be honest. Um, so, <clears throat> so let's take um, just to make things a little bit more interesting. Uh, let's consider. Um, let's just fix a q equals t q. Let's just take a bunch of products of this. Um, So um, I want you to think of this. Um, think of AQ and TQ as as uh, not extraordinarily dynamic. So not something which is has some interesting, really interesting representation theory going on. It's just something that is is not quite a toy example, but pretty close to a toy example, right? So I want to. I want to think about this. I want to think pretty hard about this, but um, I'm choosing an example that I, I want us all to think of. You know, this is like uh, 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 I want to do something kind of work with an easy algebra. Um, all right. So uh, if you don't like this, I'll give you another option, uh, which I want. Uh, so take uh, G uh, equal. SL in D bar considered as some algebraic group. Um, D equals upper triangle people uh, in G and take A to be uh, the group ring for the first of these kernel inside of B1. Uh, so, uh, so you can get some work that out. Um, so then I can replace uh, right. Right. So how many factors does it take? Probably one. And you can ask a question also. I, I should ask uh, how many factors actually do you take for a Q? I mean, you say 10 times, I guess, but what yes. does that uh, It doesn't matter. Oops. What? <laughs> so it's not part of the. I mean, the AQ will be different when you. Yeah, but at the end, I, it, it's not going to matter. Like I'm not going to. It's like saying take an elementary billion p group. Yeah. We'll say what the rank is. <laughs> yeah, you have an excuse. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't write it. Said what p? <laughs> um. No. So you think about like there's a a version of this where I don't know the full story for like the quantum Borel at the top. You know. And then, so I think I have this representation theory, a geometric representation theory, and maybe I'm going to pull all this into my analysis. That's not happening here. I'm just looking at some algebra. Yeah. Um, yeah 
I've been known to talk about the quantum group every now and again. Okay, so uh, an easy calculation. So yeah, so this one's symmetric. So if you don't like this thing, just think about that thing. Um, and uh, so an interesting point is uh, that I, 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 I can't think of, so maybe I'll come back to this. this. I'll draw what you're doing. So this is an infinitesimal group scheme that, that somehow is important here. Okay, so in, in easy calculation, uh, is that um, the uh, self-extensions of uh, the trivial representation, which later I'll just call it one, but I'll call it uh, C for now, uh, is just a, a polynomial ring uh, in, in generators with uh, Degree of these generators two, which uh, I'll want to think about as uh, uh, functions on some uh, affine space, maybe a shift in some generator. So that'll that'll come up later. So if you uh, get bored, uh, you can just try to calculate that, and maybe that'll take you only a couple minutes, and then you'll be bored again. But <laughs> what's that? Two L, two L, two L. Um, what should we tell this in? The, the domain, the degree. degree. No. So no, no. what's happening yes. here? Yeah. So what's happening here? Look can at I the. See, can I see the presentation again? Uh, uh, just, uh, there is no presentation. It's just the. It, uh, not, of the algebra. The, yeah. The, yeah. Yes. T Q. Oh, sorry. So what's going on here? So this uh, C X one X L. What would that usually have? Generator degree one. Generator degree two, but the he's going to eat up the generator in degree one. So I'm just left with a polynomial ring and a single variable. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll erase the left hand side and I'll keep that side and you can keep it. <laughs> So if I have one generator, is that okay? If I just take the T Q and I get a polynomial ring, one, one uh, just one polynomial, one polynomial ring, is that all right? No, but I, I think uh, Dave's point is that uh, it should eat not also degree two generator, but uh, all the way up to the elf power, and then because uh, conjugation by G of the degree two generator has eigenvalue. So okay, so I'm just like I'm just being really ridiculous, right? So like the G X trivially on the relation, ah, right? So the relation is what lives in X two. Right, so G X by Q, it's you know, and then on the X in is Q in, right? And then I get here, and it doesn't do I'm, anything. I'm I'm used to to the exponent of X being one one modulo. Mm -hmm. It's making too hard. Yeah. This is not extremely hard. dynamic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I guess I don't think it's so All right. So, uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of history. This is one. Okay. All right. So, um, some some uh, some context here, okay? Um, <clears throat> So some history for uh, Well, I guess for AQ slash TQ. Okay, so, <clears throat> so AQ was studied by um, I'm so what is the one? 
Okay. Um, and two papers, uh, as uh, someone just mentioned, this word, quantum elementary, also Q elementary, uh, I'll say L. Okay, so they, um, they produce um, uh, high point uh, support theory. Uh, uh, for uh, for this uh, uh, for a Q. Okay, so here I would compare with I guess Carlson is what you compare with here. Um, and in a kind of a different kind of comparison, there was another paper by um, Vincent uh, Erdman. So this is really a talk about tensor things. Uh, this kind of had the same kind of high points, if I recall correctly, um, but uh, wasn't kind of a tensorial kind of analysis. Um, and uh, so what do they do? And then they, um, uh, well, so they show a lot of stuff, which maybe the output was that the uh, spectrum of a stable category uh, for AQ was just, uh, and I'm guessing, I guess it is <laughs> in this one, which I want to think about is this is uh, PA. SP it. <clears throat> um, all right, so they, they, they had uh, thought about this as some kind of, um, uh, so I guess you compare this to um, Kip talk, right, where he was talking about uh, the geometry, so this Kind of perceives that, and they're 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 thinking about this particular case of a non-commutative uh, situation. Um, so that's that's one kind of option. You have this pi point support theory. So I guess I didn't even I should have said this at the beginning. So this is this is a talk about support theory. Um, uh, sorry, I didn't, uh, I didn't say that. Um, yeah, so this is a talk about. I just said it about experiments. Um, yeah, so, so, so some talk about support theory for this. Just have to algebra and thinking a little bit harder about it, a little bit differently about it, how you think about really hard about it. Um, okay, so uh, I think you also admits a uh, hypersurface support theory. Let me underline this. A hypersurface support theory. <coughs> <coughs> So here, instead of thinking about this as an elementary building figure, if I think about um, <coughs> I think about this as some kind of non-commutative complete intersection, and um, so kind of Abramoff and book fights maybe are the right um, uh, yeah uh, book fights. Um, and um, so it's the same kind of conclusions that you can uh, do, uh, you know, kind of full support theory kind of with all the stuff. So, um, this 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 uh, this analysis expands beyond this particular example, but um, and then also you have um, uh, the uh, this. Uh, uh, action on the category. I also have uh, the kind of BIK uh, local cohomology, uh, cohomology uh, support theory. Okay. So I have this option, and here I don't know what uh, don't know what to do. Don't know how this works. Okay, so of course, if I'm just looking at five-dimensional stuff, <coughs> um, I'm just going to get uh, cohomological support, which Many people are familiar with, um, you know, but if I start doing this harder analysis, we start thinking about stratification, you're going to try to do these things, I don't know exactly what comes out. Um, okay, so this is kind of the, the, the history of thinking about this, um, this, uh, uh, this algorithm. So I guess I should have said, so this is, and I don't know what this is, like three papers. Um, talk about 
these kind of things. Um, okay. Um, um, okay, so so um, so not everybody here, I, as far as I can tell, is you know working on support theory, doing spectral stuff like this, um, or doing you know, taking spectral categories and stuff. So. Uh, you know, if I want to just say what's, what's going on here is that um, it's kind of far from the center triangular geometry is, is um, you might think about it is, is, you know, I take some triangular category and then I extract some topology from it, some geometry from it. Um, but you need uh, what I would refer to as some kind of like operating system on which to run kind of tensor triangular geometry, right? This is some program, I need some, uh, I need to run it on something. And so these different Options, right? This is like Linux and this is you know Windows. And, okay. And so if I'm doing something so that, you know just kind of normal, I'm you know watching cat videos on YouTube or something, it doesn't matter which one I take. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if, I, uh, if I want to do something really, you know, some really intense calculation, it, it, it's gonna kind of matter which one I take. Maybe one's more efficient than the other. Um, and um, um, and you imagine that in this, this kind of analogy that I'm giving you that maybe I even spit out different answers if I do a really hard calculation. So um, I have, I think of these as just these different options for thinking about these different ways to run tensor triangle geometry for this relatively simple uh, example. Um, so that's kind of what's, what's uh, why, what this is relative to this kind of more maybe formal stuff of this thing. Um, so for uh, reasons, um, reasons um, so I, I want to get some uh, 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 arguably deeper, deeper understanding. Uh, and, and and so I look at um, at uh, AQ one. So okay, so this is why I chose a kind of not super dynamic example, is because I, I want to see if I can get some kind of uh, more robust understanding of, of, of a support theory. So one of the things being that <clears throat> these are neither you know. I'll just stick with the one that I did, right? Uh, that I was part of. Um, it's not clear, you know, why you just do this because you can do this. You just kind of do this because you can do this. Um, so it's, it's somehow not a, not a very satisfying situation for me. Um, uh, okay. Um, all right. So let's do a theorem. Where did I start? Okay. Uh, right. So a theorem. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll put my theorem on the next one. So, okay. So, so of course I haven't said anything uh, much so far, but is there any questions? Um, and again, I, I'm purposefully um, just using this one example, but there, there is some kind of class of examples that I might think about here. Uh, 
Central um, <coughs> Park or the Q, I have um, I think it's right here. I need to say something. <laughs> So this would be the, uh, for now, let's just say this is the derived category. Uh, so I have a fully faithful central uh, tensor functor. Um, let's call this F. Conical here achieves uh, this word is probably a bit unfamiliar, but we'll get to that. Quadricular achieves on affine space, uh, mapping into the BG sheaves, uh, mapping into the derived category of representations for right <laughs> And furthermore, so this functor is in equivalence onto this localizing subcategory generated by the Fermi representation uh, inside this, inside this. Okay. Um, and uh, in our Hans, in our Hans, uh, for the uh, resulting uh, action of this on that, So recover, um, I'll say X, but it's R on. Um, we'll say R on. Uh, this with its, its natural natural uh, action. Okay, so. Uh, I should probably spend some time just explaining what this says. Um, maybe it's not uh, super immediately clear. Okay, so the first thing I want to say is just be a little bit uh, more uh, careful about what I'm saying here. So who is this person? Uh, normally, so this... Uh, Rep uh, DG AQ is, is explicitly so this in category of the bounded derived category of representations over AQ um, considered as some uh, stable infinity category. Um, what about stable infinity category? Okay, so let me um, compare with. Um, so let me compare with, uh, uh, yeah, for example. So, so if we were uh, to take uh, uh, Q equals to uh, 2, uh, then, or maybe 4, uh, so order of Q equal to 2 or maybe 4? Yeah. Uh, so that we get super, uh, like, uh, Swedler algebra and then the products of Swedler algebras, so super group. Sure. So then, uh, th will this be uh, kind of the standard Kazul duality between uh, symmetric and exterior algebra? So, do you want to do you want to literally work in character two or in no, 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 any complex numbers with but without root of unity? Well, you said what? Well, I'll, be, I'll be missing. I'll be missing the. I'll, I'll be looking at the second Veronese in the. Um, we're looking at the secondary Nase inside of the the Kazul dual, right? So I would still have, uh, um, but so because of the because of the presence of the group, I'm gonna uh -huh. I'm gonna fiddle with Kazul duality a little bit. Uh -huh. But there will be Kazul duality. Um, if you think about integrating the group into your analysis, like I, yeah. I'm working inside of the, yeah. you know, then I would have precise Kazul duality at that level. Yeah. So you, you can. Um, but it is uh, morally speaking, uh, like something like Kazul duality. Right? Yeah, so something like Kazul duality. The interesting part is, 
Well, okay, let me look at the data and maybe I'll say more about that. Um, okay, so I can compare with this, which I've, I'm taking for granted with uh, people on route 10. Um, but what's uh, what's happening in in, uh, in this kind of homological uh, support is that your input for this is just thinking about uh, X really with some uh, uh, natural action of some ring. So you think I, I get started on this uh, support, uh, I get my, machine, my support theory machine cooking by giving you an algebra, and call this R, and uh, an action on my category, which is just a, a natural action on all the homes, okay? So I'm extracting that, that data here. Um, so to compare with this, uh, 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 okay, so to get that kind of support theory running, So all I need is a, uh, a plane that's a non um, uh, from your yeah. Okay, so like this is like this is like E uh, E one formality of the right homomorphisms. So this is this is this is uh, kind of what I need to get this thing started. Um, the modality so this is like uh, an E two formality uh, for uh, R and Um, and then the centrality is a higher level of, of kind of kind of beyond formality, I guess. Okay. So so you kind of get this machine started. There's some kind of modality that I'm entering into here. And there is uh, some kind of centrality. Um, and to, so a second point is that this is just a tensor subcategory inside of here. So this, what this theorem is doing is saying, and this is so this is completely canonical, completely determined by this. There are no choices here. And what this theorem does is it's identifying what this is as a category, and you're saying it's sheathed on something. <clears throat> and so the centrality here, um, what does this say? Um, So the centrality says um, <coughs> uh, that uh, rep GG AQ is naturally a sheet of tensor categories uh, over, over AN. Okay. And a lot of the structure, again, is just determined implicitly by, the, by what, what you've given me. So uh, let me just uh, talk a little bit about the uh, a little bit about the, the proof here. And so as I'm as I'm thinking about support theory, I'm almost I'm 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 what I'm kind of inching towards is well support theory for AQ is just thinking about this thing naturally as a sheaf over the, this this uh, algebra that's been given to me. Right? This is kind of scheme that's been given to me. <laughs> Question. You're not thinking of this as literally a sheaf, but as a as an happening action. What? Say, um, are you thinking of this literally as a sheaf? Um, I can think of it literally as a sheaf whose sections are given by base change along whatever. So I'll I'll say some more words about that in a second. Um, after I give some details on the proof, and then we'll come back to this idea. But um, 
just if you, you know, black out between now and then, there's a paper by Dennis Gatesburg who talks about sheaves on various things, and basically the end of to model categories over uh, sheaves on the scheme. Yeah. And basically, the, the kind of main point of that paper was that every, every, every single sheaf on uh, X, if X is um, somehow kind of classical, are just given to you in that, in that fashion. They're determined by their, their global sections. Any other uh, questions about that? Okay. I don't know how weird this statement is. It's not so weird to me, but maybe it's kind of weird. Sure. So it's as, as if there is a family. But the family is parameterized by some derived parameters. Um, uh, so there, I would say, like, just really parameterized by DG maps into AM, right? Yeah. And there are lots of DG maps into AM, which are synthesis things formally, which are classical, right? Uh, you can still think of maps from like spec KT, T inverse into AM, which are giving me just lines inside of AM. But it's not that you really have some non trivial family of tensor categories over ordinary classical base because uh, of the minus two shift. It's kind of like being over PN. Right? Each point in PN has a corresponding DG map. Yeah, so it's a derived object so in the sense that, the, that we don't really have a non trivial deformation of the category yeah, in the normal, usual sense. I mean, I, I, don't, I, I don't exactly know what you mean, but like, there is. Uh, it's not like, when, for, for example, if you had a quantum group and you deformed Q. It's not like, like that. So it's. I mean, that's just, just because I don't have a lot of classical stuff here. Like, if right, I, right, I have right. a lot of stuff in degree zero, then I. That, that, that's right. I that's have right. a classical deformation theory as well. Right. 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 That's what I. Yeah. Um, but there's still kind of parameters inside of PN where you can move. Right? So you still have a non trivial family like in that direction. Right? And then PN is where all the derived stuff looks. Yeah. Um, so you still move in that direction. That's not, it's not just like a formal thing. Um, okay. So, uh, a little about the proof. Um, so, um, so what happens here? Um, so uh, again, I'm from advertising this as like nothing, no kind of almost no choices happening, but for the proof, you, you make some choices. Um, so uh, so I have a deformation, uh, an obvious uh, hop deformation, um, <clears throat> tell the Q. So let's, let's, this is just going to be a polynomial ring in in variables. And I smash with some uh, g in times. Uh, and that's what this is. And this is just the axon to AQ by killing the uh, uh, health powers of the, uh, of the generators here. Um, and this is parameterized by uh, the algebraic group uh, g, a, some additive group by some n dimensional. Uh, vector space. Um, so this gives um, uh, the standard definition theory of a functor um, from uh, 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 quantum kind of sheaves on, this, I don't know if it's T star or T1, whichever one it is. I don't know if it's dual this. Give a negative two, which is the same thing as uh, not shifting a some closed duality uh, into this um, into this category. Um, and I'm saying this in some kind of fancy way, but it's really like you take you Kazoo resolve your your algebra and you do something rather rather explicit. Um, and so basically, since we're in such a simple uh, setting. 
Oh, and I want to think about this as basically, um, I want to make a comment about this. Uh, he's on the drive intersection of, of uh, one of Again, this is something which I'm writing kind of in a fancy way, but you think, well, this is a smooth variety, so I just because we'll resolve this, then I have an exterior algebra, and what is the way in symmetric algebra? Okay. Um, uh, uh, since the situation is, is, is kind of relatively explicit, uh, it's highly specific. Uh, um, I can go into this uh, machine. And just make it in sort of. Deformation machine is just make it in sort of. Uh, and also produce observed gravity. Okay, so I, um, you just kind of by hand, because you're in such a simple situation, you can look at this and kind of know that it's in, in isomorphism onto some tensor subcategory, and you can kind of just explicitly uh, make, make it a tensor function and uh, make it central. Um, that's uh, that's, uh, that's kind of how that works. Okay, so um, I can give uh, more detail, but maybe we'll just uh, leave it at that for this one last thing. Desire for further elaboration here. Okay, so I had two more things I wanted to talk about, but I think I maybe only have time for one. Um, so let's okay. So let's let's uh, come to this kind of support theory um, back to support theory uh, for um, uh, in two. Uh, yeah. So I kind of think about this this system. Um, um, okay. So so so. Uh, so sections um, if I think about this uh, uh, along with some uh, map, so let's say y to let's just say this is a map of these things, so that would be up in these rings. Um, is a uh, phase change. Um, uh, along uh, along the pullback uh, map up here. Okay. Um, and I note that for any uh, for any points inside a projective space. So some geometric points inside of uh, classic PN, okay, uh, PN minus one, I guess. Um, I get uh, unique up to isomorphism. I'll just say unique um, corresponding map from this. Now this is a field, um, a graded field or DG field into um, into, uh, uh, into the CG scheme. Okay, so, so each point inside a projective space gives me a corresponding uh, kind of uh, uh, DG map or a kind of drive map, how you want to think about it. So uh, I can look at all the, the kind of fibers uh, of my category along uh, PN, which I'll
and these, these maps, um, uh, and, you know, they, they can fit into like a PN family. PN minus one family. Okay. So, uh, so I can consider the fibers, okay. Um, so, EG, fire with lambda, which is I just defined via this, this base change. So this is now, I turn some category with some structure over, over uh, uh, this affine space into a, uh, a linear category, right? Now this is over some, some kind of field. Um, and I get a kind of, uh, I get a intrinsic uh, uh, support theory. So I would say uh, uh, for him, uh, category. Uh, maybe I say that the support of M is just the image of all the points. So this is all uh, lambda. Where was I going? Uh, spec K. Uh, P minus one. Uh, at which uh, the image of lambda inside of this fiber uh, is not vanishing. Okay, so I, I really meant the images, so this is some, what was that inside of PN, all right? So I not only have a support theory, but I have kind of, these are not quite tense triangular fields, what you think about, I, I kind of also realize my fields at the same time. So I've got, I've got the, the ring, I've got it acting, I've got representatives for my, um, uh, I've got kind of realizations, this is part of my, my operating system, I've got my kind of support operating system going, um, and then I have <coughs> It's kind of topological output here. Okay. Um, and so uh, I'll say our preliminary findings from our, uh, <laughs> from our experiments here is that this, this uh, intrinsic support theory um, recovers. Um, uh, recovers uh, you know, at least approximately a hypersurface support. Uh, for uh, so in particular, these fibers are, are calculable. Are calculable uh, as hypersurface categories. Which I don't, know, I don't know how to write this, but this is like rep DG. There's a certain uh, added group scheme, kind of quote unquote quantum added group scheme, and you mod out by one parameter family, one parameter sort of classical family. Um, uh, so you end up with a with a group. So if I didn't mod out by this, this category has no tensor triangular geometry. So I introduce one dimension of tensor triangular geometry when I when I when I mod out by this. Um, so it's kind of one, it, it, it's, it has a one thing over there. Um, uh, uh, yeah, so this, so, you know, it could have reproduced anything, it could have reproduced pi points, or whatever. It reproduces this, uh, this um, hypersurface support theory. Okay, so, so without kind of going into this machine, I kind of know this, this recovers all my tensor triangular geometry that I, that I knew for this anyway. I know how I know how support works. Okay, um, so I'm out of time. I was, was going to say um, there's kind of some real reason why I want to think about the situation. Um, you know, it's motivated by uh, wanting to think about finite tensor categories as living in some three category of tensor categories and small enough and stuff like that, but. Um, you know, time is telling me that I should not do that. So, um, so uh, yeah. So anyway, I'll, I'll leave it there. So um, thanks a lot. Yeah.